Christine Alexandris. Good morning. Andre Bacchus, our assistant director in charge of the work placement part, and especially delighted that we're joined by two of the candidates who are in their work placement at the moment, and you'll be hearing from them, meeting them a little bit more in a few minutes. Uh, Joanne Hamza. Good morning. And you're working at Goodman's. Um, and Josh Takuna. Good morning. And you're working at Infrastructure Ontario. Thanks so much for being with us this morning, and I, I know we've got some really tough questions ready for you, <laughs> but uh, what, what we're going to do is I'm going to speak for a few minutes and just give you an overall sense of the approach, uh, why the Law Practice Program exists, uh, what the goal of the Law Practice Program is. Gina's going to spend a few minutes after that talking about the training components. Um, and Andre is going to speak about the work placement process, and then we're going to have a bit of a Q&A with our candidates uh, so they can share you their perspectives of how things are going, um, what they thought, what they experienced, um, give you a sense of what you can experience uh, when you join us, uh, hopefully, come August. So the Law Practice Program is another route to obtaining your call to the bar um, for forever. It's been known as articling. And the Law Society decided by a convocation that they would develop an alternate stream. It's an equivalent stream. And they did this for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, to make sure that candidates could find a route to put their education to work. But more importantly, uh, because the Law Society in Ontario, like law societies throughout the country, is moving to a skills-based approach to the call to the bar. And so the Federation of Law Societies, which consists of all of them, um, adopted by the Law Society of Upper Canada, decided that before candidates get called to the bar, they should have a certain skill level, the basic skills that lawyers throughout the country have identified as the key to success. So what are those skills? They're professionalism and ethics, analytical skills, oral and written communication, research skills, client management, and practice management. They also decided uh, that candidates should at least uh, touch on a series of tasks uh, during their transition year. Now, of course, when you article, you can get all types of experience. Uh, there are all types of employers. Um, we all articled before we were called, mm -hmm. um, and it's been the traditional way. What they've done with the law practice program is effectively tell us, and we got the English-speaking contract, the University of Ottawa does it in French, um, that we're to base our approach on those six skills baskets, and we're to expose the candidates to tasks in seven areas of law, so civil, criminal, family, administrative, real estate, wills and estates, and business. And our approach is, Four months of training, which we'll talk about a little bit before Gina gets into more detail, and four months of a work placement. This is not school. You're not students. They're not classes. Um, we have asked members of the profession, practicing lawyers, uh, to help us develop files. And the candidates work on files. And they work in firms. And they experience all that you might experience and sometimes a little bit more or a little bit differently um, as if you were actually working in a firm. Uh, the unexpected and the planned. The extremely high pressure um, and the just pressured. Um, <laughs> the reasonable and unreasonable demands of the employer. There are four months of training and at the end of the four months, as long as you have met of a certain skill level required by the Law Society, you go on to a work placement. And that work placement, uh, we had 221 candidates go on to work placement uh, opportunities throughout the province of Ontario. They're everywhere from Thunder Bay to Ottawa to um, southern Ontario and lots in the GTA. And they're in government and private employers. Uh, every candidate who successfully completed the training component found a work placement and almost three quarters of those are paid. And Andre will speak more about that. What we're trying to do uh, in this program is not just get you called to the bar, we're trying to position you for success. Uh, the profession is starting to change and we all expect the pace of that change will be accelerating 
and will become very rapid very quickly. So as we enable you to develop your skills, um, we want you to also do so and become more innovative and entrepreneurial in your approach. Who knows what you'll be practicing in five years' time? Who knows where you'll be practicing? But if you know how to withstand change and then take advantage of change, you're going to be better positioned for success whatever you decide to do in the coming years once you get called to the bar. Um, it was action-packed, fast-paced. It's of the profession, by the profession, for the profession. This is exclusively practicing lawyers and judges. That's who we're pitching this for and to. Because at the end of the day, the employers, we want the employers to take you on, to accept you, and to see in you the talent that we saw in the candidates that we met during the first year. Um, we are pushing people hard because we know the profession will. Uh, we're asking a lot because we know the profession will. But we have members of the practicing bar providing feedback, mentoring, assessing, so that when you are told that there are areas that need improvement, you know it's coming from somebody who's actually experienced it. Uh, when you're told that your work meets the standard, likewise, you know it comes from somebody who knows what the standard should be because they're actually experienced, experiencing it as we speak. We had some magnificent speakers uh, who brought to life different issues. I know the first day we started out with the Chief Justice of the Province of Ontario, the Honorable uh, Justice Strathy, um, who provided his first substantive speech as Chief Justice uh, to the candidates. And throughout the program, we had a number of people who brought the, brought the practice areas to life. But I'll, I'll let Gina and the candidates develop a little bit more of the work placement or of the uh, training program as they have a discussion. Um, and the work placement, well, you'll hear, you'll hear from our candidates who are in the middle of it, mm -hmm. thanks to their employer for giving them time off to be here. We really appreciate that. Um, but you'll hear about the types of places, how it all works, and how we expect it to work in the future. I want you to know that we're asking everybody, everybody how it's gone in year one. Uh, we're not a static group. It's not as though we published a text and we're going to follow every page in exactly the same order in year two. Our position is the things we did really well in year one, we'll figure out how to do even better. The things we'll only ever do once in year one, <laughs> Those are the things we'll only ever do once, and we'll figure out how we develop the skill in an even better way. It's all about success. It's all about your success, because if you're successful, the public will be successful in obtaining great representation from candidates like you. So I'm going to turn it now over to Gina, and Gina, maybe uh, take the candidates or potential candidates uh, uh, through the training program a little bit and give them a sense of, of the structure and, and how it works. Absolutely. Thanks, Chris. And good morning to everybody. It's a pleasure to, to join you by webinar today. Uh, with regards to the training component, while we're going to hear a little bit more about the uh, impact and about the experience by Josh and Joanne, I wanted to give you a little bit of a, an overview of what the training component is like. As Chris said, the LPP overall is your transition into the work environment. It's not an extension of school. You're not going to be um, going to lectures. You're not going to be uh, doing homework. You're going to be working. It's, in essence, a virtual simulated uh, work environment. And we want you to think that way from the get-go. And so um, a lot of our conversations leading up to the training component and during the training component and continuously during the training component are in that vein. You are at work from the day that you start in the training component to the day that you finish the work placement, this is really that transition period for you. So in terms of the training component, and all of it is geared to the skills that Chris talked about, uh, our focus continuously is on developing those skills. One of the things that we do, and you'll hear Josh and Joanna talk about, uh, Joanne talk about the, uh, their experience, but uh, make a pointed effort of calling you candidates. We break into firms of four, approximately four. There's some with three, some with four. And that is done randomly. So we know we've had uh, people asking, can I be with my, no, you're done randomly. Because in the work setting, and, and people who are uh, 
in work environments right now or who will be in work environments know that sometimes you don't get to choose. Oftentimes you don't get to choose the people that you work with or that you have to interact with. And so one of the things that we want to establish from the get-go is that group uh, skill, the, the skill of being able to adapt to individual styles, individual experiences, benefiting from it and being able to move forward on a piece of work with that group. So you're put into groups of four. And remember, this is a province-wide program and it is primarily virtually except for three weeks that I'll speak about in a moment which means that you could have um, candidates and colleagues who are sitting across the province working together with you so you might have somebody in Toronto and one of your colleagues might be in Ottawa another colleague might be in Windsor another person might be in Sault Ste. Marie and in addition to your colleagues in the firm we are also matching each firm up with a mentor these mentors are members of the profession who are there with each firm for the duration. Um, we, we give you the benefit of two mentors because we switch that up and while that may have caused some anxiety initially, once you got your new mentors, you uh, I think uh, all the candidates really enjoyed that. But you're working with the mentor to guide you, to develop you, to give you feedback on the work that you do. So when I say the work that you do, um, from the get-go you're acting as a firm with the benefit of a mentor who supervises you. And from day one, you you are meeting with clients, you are engaging in file openings, you are docketing your time. Um, uh, that was an interesting experience, docketing time, but uh, you are also working on file work. So we talked about clients and you're, you may be wondering, well, who are the clients that we're working with? We have an excellent program. One of the benefits of uh, the Ryerson LPP is that we have a tremendous partnership across Ryerson with various uh, areas of the university. And one of the programs is the ISTC, which offers us um, uh, clients, and I'll put that in quotes, because they're, they're live individuals who will be your clients in files from day one until uh, the end of the training component. And you're working with them. In some instances, it's a in-person uh, interaction when you're in person here at Ryerson. And other times, you're dealing with them via webinar. So a lot of the activity that you'll be doing week to week, outside of the three in-person weeks, will be via webinar. You'll meet with your mentors, you'll meet with your colleagues, you'll meet with your clients, you'll interview your clients, you'll have prep meetings with your clients via webinar. So among the things that we would suggest that you sort of prepare for as you're thinking about the program, um, we'll give you lots of information and lots of training, but you do want to ensure that you have some familiarity and comfort with technology. That you're not afraid to, uh, to go onto a webinar, you're not afraid to try technology because you're going to be using technology quite a bit in the program. And while we have excellent supports for that, it's one thing that in terms of a mindset we want you to be prepared for during the training component. The files that you're working on, uh, you're not going to be looking at one at a time. So oftentimes we get the question, oh, so will I be working on a family file, will I be working on a criminal file one at a time? The answer is nope. The first one, because it's the first one, you'll get um, introduced to you, but just as in practice, we start layering. You'll work on one file, another file will then be introduced a week or so later or a few days later. Um, another file will then be added on top of that and you're juggling different requirements and priorities. And part of it, remember again, is to focus on the skills development that Chris talked about as well as and part of that is managing your time. So in terms of practice management being one of the skills or client management, how you juggle those responsibilities and how you juggle your priorities is something that is being developed by the uh, work that comes to you for, uh, for each of the files. And you get the files as you would in a, uh, in a live setting, which is sometimes an, uh, an email by a partner, sometimes a telephone message saying, we need this by X date, and you have to run with it. The work that uh, we ask you to do is a combination of group work, so some of the file work requires you to collaborate with your colleagues and actually do a group assignment, and other work is individual, that we want each of you to, uh, to, to contribute to the file. You'll get feedback from your mentor on those files and, uh, and continue to develop the skills throughout the four months. I talked about uh, in-person weeks. So in addition to the ongoing work that you're doing with the files, you're also being required to attend at Ryerson three times uh, in the period. So we've got August the 24th for the full week, October the 13th for the four days, 13th to the 16th, and December 14th to 18th. Those are on our website. If you didn't get them, you can always go back to our website there. Uh, we've noted them onto our website. 
And the in-person weeks at Ryerson, first of all, are mandatory. So you must be able to attend in person at Ryerson during those three weeks. And I'll, I'll, we'll come back to, to those uh, and we'll get the experience from Josh and Joanne, but they're intense. Um, you're busy. If we, if we get the question, when should I expect to be there? Is it a couple of hours? Even if you have something for an hour or two hours, you're preparing. You are on. We have sessions. Andre does some work sessions, work placement sessions. Um, because it's a, uh, a simulated work environment, Andre will do during the four months what many law firms, legal organizations have, which is professional development training. And we intentionally call it professional development training because this is part of your training in the process. And so whether it is an, uh, a session with Andre, whether it is a session with one of our guest speakers, or whether you're actually interviewing or preparing your client, or in the uh, October and December weeks in particular, you may be involved with a new client interview. You may be involved with doing a presentation before an administrative tribunal member. You may be involved with negotiation. You may be involved with a mediation. Um, you may be cross-examining a client. There are a number of different requirements where the file that you've been working on, the files that you've been working on, have built up to a specific area in October and then again in December where you will have the benefit of um, carrying out those requirements and off and usually in front of a member of the bar or bench who's had a number of judges who've actually participated as well who will then give you assessment and feedback on your performance uh, during those uh, those weeks I've got to tell you that during the in-person weeks and when we also have the client meetings the client interactions um, it's incredible to hear especially going from August to December the uh, the feedback from the assessors as well as the feedback from the clients um, it's it, it's really quite uh, interesting when they have finished a client meeting and they'll come out and say I really want them to be my lawyers if I get into trouble down the road. It's a fantastic, uh, um, I think, uh, uh, call to the work that is being developed. And our, our belief and, and hopefully um, the experience that you'll have in the program, you'll start thinking like a practicing lawyer thinks. And we realize that that means so many different things to so many people. But the ultimate goal for us is to help you succeed not just in the four months of the training component, not just in the additional four months of the work placement, but ultimately to succeed and to be able to manage a different environment, a changed environment, once you get called to the bar. So while your short-term goal might be to finish the training component, and then your a little bit longer-term goal is to finish the work placement component su successfully, and then a another goal is to be called to the bar, all of the skills and the tasks and the assignments that you're working on really are laying a foundation, a stronger foundation for your ultimate success in whatever you choose to do. One of the questions that people ask us and that you might have on your mind right now is, well, I'm not really interested in family law, or I'm not really interested in business law, I really have a focus on civil litigation or criminal law or real estate. Do I have to do all of the files? And the answer is yes. <laughs> um, all candidates are required to do all of the work in each of the files that we uh, provided to you. And our, our thought on that is it exposes you to an area that you may not have thought about before. Uh, we've had people confirm that you know, I never thought that I'd like to do this, but I think I might be interested in looking at opportunities now in this area that had never come to me before. And for others, it meant, you know what, I really think I'm going to focus on the areas that I had wanted to, because I, I now confirm that having done that, maybe I don't like that as much. But it's a really great um, experience for you to be able to try something that, in our thing, oftentimes you don't have the experience to have that breadth and depth of the exposure to various areas. So I think take advantage of that, look at it as positively as possible, and experience it in all ways possible. And, and Gina, there were two, um, just briefly, there were two special projects That's that right. they were involved in. And one was the uh, Access to Justice Innovation Challenge, Absolutely. and there was the preparation of a business plan. So Absolutely. just briefly on those two. A little bit of those two, and we'll hear a little bit more about it from our candidates as well. Uh, as we mentioned, working together in groups, oftentimes in the work setting, those groups are called committees and you are required to do committee work. And so one of the things that we wanted to do is engage you to think, think broadly, think differently, uh, think extensively on two topics. The Access to Justice Innovation Challenge uh, was a, um, a piece of work that we asked our candidates to do to be able to come back and develop a project from scratch. And it didn't have to be technology-based, although many of the, the suggestions were and the proposals were 
think about how to develop a proposal first and foremost because that's something new and think about um, a way to deliver legal services faster cheaper better I think that was our tag uh, faster cheaper better so that you can think about something that um, feels not quite right or seems not quite right isn't working and an innovative way of doing something differently and that was a uh, we we asked you to stretch so we asked you to think creatively and there were some fantastic proposals uh, we'll talk a little yeah, bit well, about you're, that you're later on absolutely and the business plan so many of you might be thinking why do I need to do a business plan um, you know at this stage I'll I'm not going to run a business what what we realize is that many of you will in fact whether you're working for somebody else or deciding to open up your own firm down the road uh, or having clients who are dealing with business issues knowing the um, the requirements for what it takes to be able to go to the bank hand them a plan that says I need X funding and then being able to think about the different components that are required to get you to that stage was something that we thought was very very um, uh, necessary for the future success of the candidates and, and again we'll, we'll hear a little bit more about it so thinking about things such as well, what are the actual expenses around? You know, for example, I, we had the chuckle in the first uh, the first drafts. Many of our candidates forgot that there's mandatory legal insurance, and so we had to go <laughs> back and say, "By the way, you've forgotten this critical piece of uh, of what your expenses might look like. Who are your clients going to be? Where is that coming from? What does that look like? Uh, and what kind of marketing are you going to do? What is the specific draw?" And so I think just being able to and even drawing financials up. That was, I think, a piece of interesting, an interesting experience for many people to have to actually do um, uh, financials for, for their business because for some they hadn't, for others they had, and Josh will speak a little bit, I think, to, to that in a, in a few moments. So those are two pieces of work that you're doing on top of the file work uh, and on top of preparing for, uh, for work placement. So uh, with that, May 29th, I just wanted to signal and remind people, is the deadline for those who are registered with the Law Society or registering with the Law Society, by which you have to register your intent to participate in the law practice program. That's great. Thanks, Thanks. Gina. Um, and uh, so as they prepared their business plan to uh, open up their business the day after a call to the <laughs> bar, um, they uh, thought about many of the things that they'll experience in the work placement. Um, Andre, how did the work placement process uh, work? Tell us about that. Sure. All right. Well, thanks, Chris and Gina. And as both Chris and Gina have mentioned, the work placements are four months in length. So they actually cover the second component of the LPP. Uh, and the idea behind the work placements ultimately is to provide candidates with the opportunity to develop those core skills further and refine them. And to be exposed to also different models of practice and doing business, which you may not get in one particular situation, but in a different situation you might get different exposure. Um, we also encourage our candidates as part of the work placement process to really think broadly about the opportunities. The opportunities can range for a variety of, of different places and I think through the work that you're doing in the training component, you might start thinking that maybe this is an area of law I'd like to explore further rather than just limit it to what I thought I initially wanted to do. Um, so both the training component and the work placement will give you those core skills to then easily transfer them into uh, the path of the practice that you want to get involved with later on down the road. So the purpose behind all of it is to help reinforce those skills. But how does it all work and how did it play out this year? Uh, which is probably what you're wondering about. So as you mentioned earlier, uh, over 220 of our candidates who are eligible to go into work placement opportunities have work placement opportunities. And they have them across the board in a variety of settings in the province. So it ranges from major institutions, large and small firms, specialty boutiques, municipal, provincial, and federal governments, as well as legal clinics and sole practitioners. So basically, it's the entire profession across the board. Uh, and some of the placements uh, were secured through opportunities that we posted on our PlacePro uh, database. They were also uh, secured through candidate outreach as well in developing their opportunities. And both Joanne and Josh are perfect examples of uh, those two paths mm -hmm. and trying to uh, develop them. Uh, we encourage our candidates throughout the entire uh, program to consider all opportunities that come their way and to think about it widely. So that means look at the postings that we put up uh, that we list for you in our database in PlacePro, but also think about what's in your network. Think about the folks that you've gotten to know over the years, the classmates that you have, the previous employers that you've worked for. Maybe these are great opportunities to further develop your skills in a legal context that you can then leverage to get a role. 
The other thing about the uh, work placements and about the process is that uh, we started to get questions about, well, how does it work? How do I end up landing a role uh, through Placeful or if I do the outreach? Well, if you're doing the outreach, we're there to support you and providing you with the necessary uh, skills to be able to conduct that outreach, but also at the same time to support the uh, employer when they come up to us to say, what is the program about? How does it work? And how do I fit in? And do I qualify? Uh, we're there to help make sure that that comes together, to sign off on the agreement, and to get you ready for the, starting that placement in January. The other part of it, though, is then you're applying to roles that we post. And the way that it works is that we ask candidates to really ensure that they put together the best possible material with sessions that we've developed to help them develop that material and make sure that they refine it to post it into their profile and then to apply to roles. So when they're applying to roles, they, uh, that information is then passed on to the employer. The employer then makes the ultimate decision as to who they want to interview and who they want to hire. We in the end want to support all of you, both the employer and the candidates, in making that process work. So as much as we can encourage candidates to be vested in the process and to ensure that you put together the best possible cover letter, the best possible <laughs> resume, make sure that you know, you're ready for that interview, that you're prepared for it, that you've done that mock interview that we've encourage you to do that you've taken the time to learn about the employer you will then have a much better opportunity in landing that role and once you do land that role then you're in a position to start proving yourself and being able to further develop your skills but it takes some time to get there and it takes some effort but if you do it early and you do it right from the start when we start encouraging you to do it uh, you'll get a placement early uh, if you leave it toward the end well, it, it could lead to you know a bit of complication, a bit of rushing for you. And maybe you don't want to do that. You probably want to get started early. So we want to ensure that you take advantage of the sessions and that you, you, know, you get someone to do that mock interview with you. And that you also ask us if you have questions as well so that we can answer them early for you as opposed to maybe waiting to the last moment. Uh, we also encourage our folks to think about as they're looking at the overall picture of where the placements are, where they might want to work, don't limit yourself. Don't think that it has to be the GTA. Maybe there's a great practice off in Thunder Bay or a great practice off mm -hmm. in Smith Falls where we actually have candidates right now who are looking at being extended into permanent roles because there's a need. So think about it widely, look at your opportunities and go from there. And just, um, Andre, thanks very much for that. Sure. All of the uh, work placement opportunities are with employers who are otherwise qualified to take an articling student as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. And all of the candidates have exactly the same powers uh, to right. do things as an articling student. Exactly, exactly. And, and as you said, all of these roles are there to further develop uh, the skills that the candidates have acquired during training. Exactly. And they're all there to ensure that when the candidates are called, they're better positioned for success in the future. Absolutely. And I know you and, uh, well, we're all out there. Um, speaking to potential employers uh, about opportunities for the future. Exactly. So, um, and you're going to a number of career fairs at different law schools. I am. I'll be off at Western, uh, Windsor, and uh, Queens. Fabulous. Yeah. Western. We'll Lyle. be at Osgood and uh, U of T yeah. as well. So, so, good. Yeah. You know and Ottawa there. tomorrow. And Ottawa <laughs> tomorrow. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, we're out speaking to uh, county law associations. I was in uh, Coburg uh, on Tuesday night, and I'll be in Kingston on uh, Thursday night, mm -hmm. um, speaking to members of the bar about it, just so we get the word out and uh, we recruit more potential employers for next year. We, so that's great. Yeah, we encourage everyone to spread the word as much as possible. The more people who learn about the program, the better it is for the candidates, yeah. the better it is for the employers. So now, uh, thanks, Andre. And let's, uh, so we're going to start getting a little bit of the inside view here. Um, <laughs> and uh, and uh, thanks so much for coming, uh, Joanne and Josh. You, and uh, Gina, why don't you fire the first skill testing question just to, <laughs> to get the ball rolling? Absolutely. Here. Well, uh, thanks again to, to both of you. And, and you're both in your placements. And uh, maybe you can just give us a little bit about what you're doing right now and how the work that you did and the experience in the four months of the training component uh, what you took from that and how it applies, uh, if at all, to the work placements that you're in. Josh, why don't we start with you first? Uh, okay. Well, as uh, Chris mentioned earlier, I'm working for Infrastructure Ontario. And um, with regard to how the program prepared me for um, the actual work placement, I think it was the discipline of um, managing your files and getting that whole practice management aspect out, out of the way. That's something you don't exactly learn in law school. Mm -hmm. It's uh, a skill that can only be developed by really being in, in the actual work. And um, when I started uh, the law practice program, um, I thought it would be a lot like law school. 
I thought it was going to be maybe just classes, <laughs> and, you know, writing papers, but it was actually opening files. It was actually meeting with clients, and that's exactly what I'm doing right now uh, at Infrastructure Ontario. So it was very, very relevant. <laughs> Joanne, how about you? Uh, I would have to say that I got a lot of confidence out of the program. Mm -hmm. So what happened um, in my case, I guess, is I felt like all of the drafting skills that we did really <laughs> helped me in my placement at the moment. We didn't do um, any of that. <laughs> 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 well, <laughs> um, and for example, like right now, I'm just writing memo after memo after memo. So I have to say that the first day, and that is the experience that I wanted to have, so I really wanted to you know, once I get into my placement, I want to feel confident. Mm -hmm. If someone asks, can you do this? I understand it's not going to be done perfectly the first time, but I wanted to, you know, look great I, or, you know, to the best of its potential. And I really feel like I did get a lot of experience. Um, my mentor, for example, was absolutely fantastic. So she was, you know, kind of following everything. Whenever we had uh, work that had to be done, I would send it to her. She would look at it. She would say, you know, I think you should review this, 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 send it back. And I mean, it's a, it's a two-way uh, I mean, a two-way stream, a two-way conversation, and then I had to obviously work hard, so it wasn't just, you know, my mentor would point out things and it would be done. I, I had to put in the effort and work. On that point, I just want to, I'm going to go off script in terms of the, the mentors, but you both have mentioned mentors, or we've talked about the mentors. Uh, they are members of the practicing bar, and you have the benefit of two, so they get two different styles, two different experiences, two different mm. backgrounds. Uh, and, and Joanne, I really am grateful that you mentioned that it, it is a back and forth. What you get out of it, what you put into it, you'll get out of it because um, you're going to get feedback and expect feedback and expect the commentary and the um, uh, the uh, the support of you know this wasn't done quite well and we want you to do it again and that's part of the the learning go back do it again and get better at it as you do it because one time that you do it isn't going to be helpful but the mentor experience was something that you both have, have talked about yeah exactly getting feedback is so important and basically that's something that uh, you might not get as much in the work placement because there just isn't enough time. Mm -hmm. But in the law practice program, you're going to get feedback on every single assignment that you submit to your mentor. In addition to that, you're going to have meetings with your mentor. And they spend a lot of time, and they invest a lot of time in you. And they really answer virtually every question. And in <laughs> addition to preparing for the, uh, the meetings, you've also got to go through some practice modules that. Um, are set up and that gives you a whole different aspect of um, just how the law practice works because you're, you go through modules that are um, based on practice management, on ethics, on uh, professional development and these are all aspects that you might not necessarily get if you just are in a work placement but it's emphasized in the program. So to that point I just wanted to um so to, to uh, clarify, uh, so during the weekly meetings that you have, and everybody has a weekly meeting with their mm -hmm. mentor, you can have many more with your firm mates, but at least one meeting uh, for about an hour, two hours with your mentor. And you do have to prepare for those meetings, not only on the file work, but a, a big part of the LPP preparation is also going through and reviewing some information on ethical and practice management matters. And uh, just to clarify, uh, and this is a question that has come up, so we'll put this uh, out as well for information. Um, articling students have to do an online professionalism uh, a, a test as part of their articling. Because of the professionalism and ethics components that you incorporate into the training component, uh, that's not a requirement for the LPP. You've already covered that as part of your as part of your meetings and your conversations. So thanks for pointing that out. So Josh. can I ask um, the types? I don't want the specific files, but the types of work, uh, Joanne, that you're doing now, or maybe the areas that you're touching on in your workplace. And I'm sort of interested in, right. in what you're doing. Right. So what does Goodman's do and what are you doing? <laughs> Goodman's does a lot. Yeah. Uh, a lot of areas of practice. Um, but I'm mainly um, working in competition law. Okay. So that is an area that I have never done before. Right. Um, even in law school, I mean, I've never really had a competition class. I mean, mm -hmm. I know what it was about, but I didn't know more than that. And that's where I thought it was really interesting and I think it was very valuable in the LPP having, and Gina mentioned before, having these seven different types, uh, different areas of law. Right. And she kind of encouraged 
encourage that even if you don't like a certain area, you know, be open and, mm -hmm. you know, try it out. Mm -hmm. And um, to be frankly honest, I'm in competition. I have to say I'm loving it. It's great. Um, the other thing is that it happens a lot during the day where I will get receive emails from other articling students or just other lawyers, associates that will say, hey, we need um, someone to submit this file to court or go to a commercial list, you know, who's available oh. to do that. So that kind of gives me the opportunity where, you know, if I have a moment in my day, I'll say, you know, yes, I'll do it. And, um, and you know, it might be in areas that I have no idea, you know, what, what it's about. So you're going down to court so from yes, time so, to time. So once in a blue moon, it could happen. Absolutely. Yeah. I had to commission something. And, and, the, and the commercial <laughs> list is that streamlined list for uh, the major commercial cases that Correct. they have in Toronto. Correct. Um, and uh, so that, you know, that's great. And you're keeping busy, I take it. I'm very busy. <laughs> yeah. yes, yes, yes. And Josh, what about the types of work that you're doing at Infrastructure Ontario? Um, a lot of it is, is sort of group-based, and uh, it's really focused on contract drafting. And there was a huge component of that in the LPP as well. Mm -hmm. We had projects which are almost directly related to what I'm doing <laughs> right now. And we also had a bunch of modules uh, on uh, on the web for the LPP where we got tips on language that's used in contract drafting and uh, terminology and just the methodology of drafting a, a contract and uh, that was stuff that I'd never done before in law school and it's I'd say about 70 to 75 percent of my day is contract management and contract drafting. And you say in groups? Yes, in groups. <laughs> that's in interesting. Groups. Yeah, so that was something that sort of struck me when we started the LPP, I sort of thought to myself, why are we working in groups? I'm going to be a lawyer, I'm going to have like my own private practice, <laughs> and I don't need to work with anyone else, and I'm like, why are we doing this? But upon arriving at the workplace, I realized that virtually everything's done in a group. There's one source document that sort of gets moved from lawyer to lawyer to lawyer. Everyone sort of adds their comments, black lines the thing, and it gets sent through the mill again, and then finally you're presented with the final draft. But it's all done with different people, and you've got to learn how to sort of adapt to different uh, personalities, different styles, and you're not going to get that by working mm. by yourself. I mean, you need the group uh, group element that's provided at the mm. LPP to sort of develop that skill. That's great. And just to confirm, because I think uh, we'll, we'll see some questions. We'll get to the questions later on. Please have your questions come yep. through. Um, but as we see them, if they're related as well, well, we'll mention them. So just to confirm that you were each placed in randomly selected groups of four, uh, three or four, and, uh, and, and you had to find a way of dealing with, with those group members. Um, a question's come up in terms of, uh, of research and research tools, because, Joanne, you mentioned the drafting that you had to do, and we got you to do a little bit of research. During the uh, during the program, <laughs> I see no hand. Uh, so um, a couple of the tools that we have, apart from and one of the things that I just wanted to clarify, we are not teaching the substantive areas of law. You're working in files, uh, and we have resources on those areas, but a lot of it um, also that engages you in actually activating your research skills and developing those research skills. We've partnered with both uh, LexisNexis and Thomson Reuters so that we do have access, the candidates have access to uh, Westlaw Next Canada and also to Quick Law, um, and in addition to a number of resources that we have provided. So maybe you can speak to, um, you know, in terms of the, were you using Westlaw next? Were you using Quick Law? Were you using both? Uh, what mm -hmm. were you doing during the actual training component? Uh, okay. Go ahead. Well, uh, <laughs> Go ahead. Josh. <laughs> okay. Go ahead, Josh. Uh, well, I, we had to sort of use both during the training component. I remember there was one um, day where we had a bunch of assignments <laughs> all lived together. And we yeah, sorry to, about that. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> well, that was a crazy day, but we have those in the office. I mean, mm -hmm. there are days where we've just got to stop and look at one file and everything that you'd schedule for your entire day, it's thrown out the window. I mean, it happened to me yesterday. So that's very practical. But yeah, for that day, um, I remember we had to note up some cases and there were only X number of cases on Quick Law and uh, there were a few additional cases on Westlaw. <laughs> so you've got to be familiar with both systems and you don't know what your employer is going to have. Like my employer has Quick law, but not West law. Mm -hmm. So um, you need to know how to navigate through both systems. Also, they at the LPP they provide you with a couple of master classes in both West law and Quick law, <laughs> learning how to use it quickly and effectively, 
and uh, you know, really making the most out of your time. Because if you're working in private practice, I know it's not really the case for me in government. You've got to be conscious of the amount of time you spend uh, on the website. So and that's really something to take into account. And I can navigate through both websites really e efficiently, thanks to the training that I received at the LPP. That's good. Cool. What about your experience? I feel the same way. I mean, I'm at the moment using a little bit more Westlaw, mm -hmm. kind of geared, mm -hmm. shifted yeah. towards that. Um, but whenever I do my research, and I was, I was really happy that we did have that training mm -hmm. session that Josh mentioned with Westlaw that kind of went through and took their time. And if we want to schedule another one, we had the opportunity to actually assist a um, couple of ones. Because sometimes, you know, just that one hour, one hour and a half, you kind of try to note everything and you forget things. So, you know, I think we had like three or four sessions yeah. that we could have attended, yeah. uh, which was really great and really useful. And that's what I'm using right now as research. Um, again, I just wanted to add like the mentor the one-on-one, -on -one, that was just fantastic. And a lot of, I guess, the memo drafting that I did during the LPP mm -hmm. and legal re research and the legal research that I'm doing even, well, my mentor's not helping me now, but, <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, what I took from her, it was just really great. Um, you know, when I would ask her certain questions, how do I do certain things? And she would really pinpoint and she would really, you know, kind of go through go through everything. I don't know, I just thought it was, it was a really good experience. And, and we talked about the technology um, and talked about setting up files. So. What did you do to set up? You weren't setting up paper files, were you, during no. the program? So what were you doing during the training program? So Which during the training program, um, I did everything el electronically. Uh, so I kind of had every all of my folders on uh, online. And that was on the Clio cloud-based uh, file system? Yes, exactly, on the Clio, correct. Um, and I was able to manage everything per, per client and then per, hmm. per subject matter, et cetera, et cetera. And that's very similar to what I'm doing actually at the moment. So when I have work to do, I have work to do sometimes for my mentor. Um, and sometimes I'll have to do it for another lawyer or another one. And you know, I have, I have mm -hmm. to you know, split everything up and make sure that I don't lose my files. Mm -hmm. And I think that was that was really a uh, good yeah. experience as well learning how to manage all of that. And I know, um, and I ask this question with a certain amount of trepidation, but I, <laughs> I know we all had you do a real estate search, Josh, <laughs> on the Terranet TerraView system. And, and it's an interesting system, but you actually searched a title or yeah. followed, a, followed a transaction from beginning to end, right? Yeah. And that was challenging, wasn't it? Yes, it was. <laughs> <laughs> And we got, you know, you, you can be blunt. We got a lot of feedback from mm -hmm. candidates about that, um, that it was great to do it. But we need to provide even more instruction at the beginning on how to approach that system. And we're incorporating that for the next year. So, Well, it wasn't really, the system sort of, just it just didn't work the way we expected it to work. But we, I still got the, the utility out of the lesson. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the actual assignment, I knew what the entire transaction looked like. Mm. Good. And that's the takeaway from it. So yeah. maybe like some of the, uh, the mechanics weren't refined to the point that maybe they should have been, but I got the point of it. And uh, I've, although I've seen parcel registers before, just because I've done that kind of mm. work, um, it's useful and it's directly pertinent to what I'm doing right now mm. at Infrastructure mm. Ontario because as you can imagine we've got to do like a ton of pin searches and yeah. we need to be familiar with the doc document and if you've never seen something like that before <laughs> this is the first time you're gonna actually have like a physical document mm -hmm. a parcel register and you can see what it looks like and you can start to try and read it and you're going to have some resources available to you at the LPP. So. Yeah, so, and, and that, Gina, is one of the takeaways, I think, from the from the program right. in the real estate section. Um, it, it is the provincial system mm -hmm. and they had set up a, a practice uh, for us, I bought a real property. Right. Um, and what we took away from that is that um, we need to do a little more preparation to make sure that the candidates can uh, get even more out of the search that you're you're doing there. Now, uh, you are doing more than I did when I articled, uh, because you've actually now searched <laughs> exactly. something on the registry system. Congratulations. <laughs> I feel like we're really lucky to be exposed to all of that. And I mean, at the moment, there's articling students that um, do a little rotation in, in real estate, but not every articling student has that opportunity. Yeah. So when I'm talking to other ones, I'm kind of like, oh, well, you know what? I actually did an entire transaction. And they're kind of like, really? And the LPP did that on my website? It was great. It was the, the real thing. The, <laughs> The real deal. The real yeah. deal. 
Um, we've got a number of questions, but I wanted to ask you both, uh, because a number of folks who are watching us and joining us today are considering, have either registered or thinking about themselves taking the LPP, participating in the LPP. And I guess if you can try and go back 10 months, a year, to when you were in their positions, thinking about the LPP, and uh, you were in their shoes, what was your expectation of the LPP at that time? And what, if anything, was the difference between what you thought you were getting yourself into, because Josh, you thought it would be extra school, I think you said, mm -hmm. and, and what the reality was for you. So sort of put yourself back in the shoes of what you expected and, and where you're at right now. Joanne, any thoughts? Yes. Um, well, I have to be very blunt. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, that's true. Uh, when I first started, I was extremely skeptical about the program. Um, I, when I was in Ottawa, I had the opportunity to speak and meet with a lot of lawyers. So I kind of asked them what their opinion was. What do you think I should do? Uh, do I article? Do I LPP? What do you think of this program? No one really knew what it was. I mean, we had the information that we had, and that was you know pretty much it. So some were like, you know what, wait, and other people you know just said, well, why don't you just go for it? And then you have the placement, you'll be licensed, and then you look for a job. Um, but what I was looking for is I really wanted that one-on-one -on -one experience I wanted to, when I do enter a firm, I wanted to feel, like I mentioned at, at first, I wanted to have that confidence, I wanted to, you know, I didn't want to be in school, I didn't want to do right. homework, I didn't want to not get any feedback, and I was afraid that all of that was going to happen, and I have to say that my experience was like the entire opposite. So I mean, would I suggest it to anybody else? 100%, I think it, um, and especially that I did seven different areas of mm -hmm. law, meeting clients, I mean, I know that, yes, we're, you know, we're not reading, meeting real clients, but believe it or not, like they they are in their role <laughs> and I it's it's yeah. true I mean during one week I think we were here at Ryerson and I just so happened to bump into one that I knew I wasn't <laughs> going to see uh -huh. and it wasn't like you know hi how are you as oh hello Joanne like I, I was their lawyer even mm -hmm. then even yeah. if I crossed paths with them at the washroom mm -hmm. in the washrooms I couldn't anyway so they're really doing their job um, the assessment week that we had I think that was great as well I mean we're meeting you know different lawyers the feedback that we're getting uh, just overall, I think it. Uh, yes. I have to say it. Uh, I was impressed. I was very impressed. Your skepticism. Oh, I don't have no. I don't have that anymore. Absolutely. Josh, how about you? Yeah, the, the huge takeaway, regardless of the kinds of files that you work on or the clients that you meet or whatever, you're gonna get those practice management skills that articling students just don't have because they're investing this kind of time in you. I mean, the people at the LPP. You're going to be able to manage files. You're going to be able to sort of interact with clients. You're going to get all of these core skills that is going to make you very successful in the workplace. Uh, a lot of the articling students have just sort of moved out from law school and been thrust into the workplace directly. And sometimes they, you just don't have the tools that are necessary uh, in order to be successful. And that's what you're going to get out of the LPP. You're going to have those practice management tools, which are just completely essential in, uh, in order to be successful in the workplace. That's my big takeaway. So again, I mean, people come yeah. into the LPP with a number of different experiences, different backgrounds, different expectations. Mm -hmm. And I think just to whether you are a recent graduate or are still in third year or in second year even thinking about it, uh, or if you have been pr um, out for a while and practicing in another jurisdiction for several years or have a lot of experience, um, treat this as a, a new experience and the opportunity to, you may, if you think you have great skills in everything, wonderful, be open to developing them further. Mm -hmm. Be open to expanding that. Yeah. skill set. Now, Gina, you were going to ask them about those two projects. Absolutely. So, <laughs> you, we talked about the access to justice and about the business plan. Um, you didn't expect to do those when you first walked in. Those were kind of uh, things that we uh, introduced to you fairly early on, but uh, unexpectedly. And they were in groups. You had to work with your firm on that. So can you tell us a little bit about your experiences in that? And, and Josh, how about uh, your, you starting this one? The Access to Justice and the Business Plan. Maybe yeah, both. I think uh, the takeaway from both of those is both were sort of policy-based uh, projects. And you might think it's not directly relevant to in the practice of law, but on my first day at Infrastructure Ontario, I was working on a policy that had all kinds, that had pretty much the essential components of a business plan. Mm -hmm. We were sort of trying to market it to someone. We needed to have financials mm -hmm. in place. We needed to have all of like the minutia and all of the details of how it sort of works in place as well. And I wouldn't be able to do that without that experience mm. from the LPP. Um, and there are policy documents that you're going to have to work with as a lawyer that you might not 
really be familiar with because you haven't necessarily picked up those skills in law school. Uh, but here, the Access to Justice Innovation Challenge and the Business Plan both help foster those skills. Yeah, no, I mean, I really enjoyed the, the, the innovation part, just where we had to be in a group and we had to think about, okay, what could we do in this project and how could we, you know, make ours the best and <laughs> uh, be creative and think about, I don't know, it really made you think about, you know, law today and what's happening and how we could develop it and for the future because, I mean, we are in an environment that, you know, everything is changing on a daily basis and who knows what's going to happen in like 10 years from now and how the system will be and I think it was really interesting to mm -hmm. do that and just like the um, going to a bank and getting all those financials and like you mentioned before, forgetting that we have insurance, like <laughs> that happens to so many people. Um, and a lot of candidates that I spoke to actually wanted to open their own mm -hmm. firms and a lot of them, or some actually never thought about it and I was just speaking to them and they were like, no, this is absolutely what I'm doing, I don't want to work, mm -hmm. you know, I'll do a placement of course, but after that first thing I'm doing is opening a business and I guess going through that experience, mm -hmm. it's a good eye opener. And, and we had some uh, bankers on the webinar to talk to you about how to get money. Um, <laughs> was that helpful in terms of putting together the business plan? Everything was helpful. Uh, yes, definitely. I mean, that was helpful. And just um, all of the meetings that we had just for all of the, um, they're not assessor, but all of the guest speakers right. that, that you had in just every single area of the law, it was great because it was really, it was practical advice. And we were able to, I mean, in my case, sometimes I use that as um, a networking tool. And mm. I kind of use that as outreach. And I use that as, you know what, I have another question to ask them. Well, mm -hmm. what are their names? Let me send an email. Let me ask, you know, my questions. Mm -hmm. And they were extremely helpful. And that's a way, and I did that as well during um, my assessment weeks. So whenever I would have like a seven minutes left after the mm -hmm. assessment, I took the opportunity to say, what do you do? And you know, what firm do you work for? Or just mm -hmm. in general. And sometimes out in a conversation, um, you know, the lawyer would even say, well, you know what, you should contact this person. And here mm -hmm. are a couple of names. And it was fantastic. And I think that's part of like the outreach that Andre was talking about. And I mean, that was the great thing about the LPP is that we met so many people, and you know, our mentor knows so many people. And when you look at it at a big scale, it's just one just person expands. knows. Yeah, absolutely. So that was. And I know you're you're going to ask Josh because he's sitting here being a little <laughs> modest about the, the Access to Justice Innovation Challenge. Um, so 64 pitches. 64 pitches. And we chose the best seven. That was hard to do, but we had to. Yeah, <laughs> and then they did a pitch down. And that was During Big Dragon's Den. Well, we had LPP Den. And who was on our panel? We had the Attorney General, the Treasurer of the Law Society. We had a um, member of the OBA, and we had somebody who deals with pitches and innovation here yeah. at Ryerson. It was a tough panel. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you had five minutes to make a pitch. So your group yeah. of four had five minutes to make a pitch and then five minutes to answer questions that were really being shot at you on yeah. a very quick basis. And literally, we had a stopwatch. And this is all a firm that was put together by random selection. Random selection. Sh <laughs> should we ask yeah. Josh who which firm won? Josh, <laughs> what are you doing in a couple of minutes? <laughs> yeah. so, and what the prize was. I feel like a showboater. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. We invited you to be. It's OK. But uh, yeah, um, my group won the Access to Justice yeah. Innovation Challenge. Yeah. All of them were great, um, but. <laughs> yeah. It, that was an amazing experience. I mean, making a presentation in front of the attorney general and uh, the treasurer. treasurer and, and all your class, your, your, your candidate, candidate mates. All the candidates. Mm -hmm. yeah. Plus, in front of the news, and uh, mm -hmm. there were some great guests who were sort of hiding under the radar, like Patrick Monaghan. Mm -hmm. uh, People from MAG who yeah. were listening to innovation things, yep. And what was the prize of significance? Uh, the prize of significance <laughs> was uh, lunch with Chief Justice Strally, and that's been uh, uh, set up. and. No, the Chief Justice is just an amazing person. He's truly a visionary. And he was the one who really spurred us on to do this Access to Justice Innovation Challenge at the beginning of the program. He had this uh, address, and he spoke about um, the future of uh, the legal profession and where he wanted it to go. Mm -hmm. And this was really the embodiment and the fulfillment of that desire. So uh, I look forward to my conversation with him. You get a one, a four on one with uh, with the chief justice. Not bad at all. <laughs> well, that's great, and and so it, maybe we'll get everybody to help us with some of the questions. Absolutely. And I, uh, okay. I, I want to just pointing up uh, something that Joanne said. I want just to um, to dispel, I think, a myth that some people believe that you are going to be sitting in your home office. And I think Josh, when we were talking a while ago, you said that you know every morning you'd get up and you would go downstairs to your home office so that you are going to work in terms of the uh, the training component. And there, there's this 
concern, assumption that, oh, you're doing everything virtually online and you don't have interaction with others. But as Joanne said, and I think Josh, your experience was as well, that and, and we're encouraging it constantly. Both the in-person weeks, but also when you are um, virtual, you've got access to mentors, you've got access to your colleagues, to the guest speakers, and and what you take away from that is what you put into it. But um, there are the opportunities to develop that personal relationship, the professional relationship. Oh yeah, you're working with your teammates constantly. <clears throat> Just because you're not. Uh, physically with them doesn't necessarily mean that you guys aren't talking all the time. I mean, there was text communications. We were able to set up virtual meetings through a platform that's sort of similar to this. Um, and we were passing on documents from one person to the other, each person blacklining and editing it. Very similar to what's going on right now mm -hmm. uh, at Infrastructure Ontario. So it was directly relevant. And don't think for a moment that you're going to be sitting in a basement and locked alone <laughs> from the rest of the world. They're there with you. I mean, you're going to be meeting your group members, and you're going to know each one of them inside out by the end of the four months. Um, yeah. So. Yeah. The um, so let's uh, we're going to start going through some of the questions, and you can send us questions, of course, um, online, um, and we'll address them. If we don't address them during the next uh, number of minutes, we'll address them um, in the days to come. Uh, just a couple of general things. Um, somebody asked, "Well, is it basically online?" and and you know we all have a this theory of what mm -hmm. online means. Um, really, it's as though you're in person, right. uh, but you may not be in the same room or in the same city. Uh, so you are getting interactive, uh, some scheduled, some unscheduled uh, requests, tasks. Uh, we encouraged and arranged for uh, candidates to go to courts uh, or to tribunals. Um, we uh, had the interaction either with, uh, with uh, special speakers. Um, <clears throat> there was a lot of video instruction. Mm -hmm. um, there was the mentor interaction that you mentioned. And we're taking the feedback and we'll probably be uh, increasing that right. for, the, for the coming year. Uh, but it's not as though the thing sits on a computer and you sort of get to chapter one when you want. That, that's <laughs> not the way this works. Uh, and it's not going into the bookstore and buying all your stuff on day one and then sort of doing it when you want. That's, that's not the way this works. Um, this is very interactive. And uh, it's true that um, you're at Ryerson in downtown Toronto for three weeks. Uh, they're mandatory attendance. This right. is not optional attendance. Um, this is work. And you're expected to come as though you're working. And you'll be treated as though you're working. Um, the um, so that's the that's the training um, and a number of questions about the um, um, about the work placement um, and questions about you know Andre where are they going to be and you know um, the compensation I've said just about three quarters of them are uh, paid um, and I think. Uh, you know, we don't have stats on articling, and um, from our call around, there are a lot of unpaid uh, mm -hmm. articling positions, and um, a number, quite a number of stipended articling positions. Um, we're working as hard as we can to find paid positions, um, and we'll continue to do that. Um, and we've got a good run uh, for, uh, you know, after year one. Uh, it's not an easy market out there. And uh, you know we're making no bones about that, um, and it's a very challenging market out there. Um, and so uh, we have an extensive approach to contact employers, tell them what we're doing, recruit them. But I somebody asked if we could find a certain place in a certain town near a certain right, uh, and that's Andre. We can't tell you that this is this is sort of not necessarily made to measure uh, employment opportunity exactly where you want exactly what you want but if you can find that one we'll support <laughs> exactly. we'll support it exactly. if you can find a four months whatever you want we'll support it and you'll make sure they qualify absolutely so we will work with anyone who's identified a particular area that they want to be in um, and if they're doing the outreach and doing the effort and we're supporting them the likelihood of connecting is, is quite great but they need to invest the time and effort to help do that we also don't have control over what the employers decide to do when an employer decides to hire they're hiring based on their interviews and based on what they're doing and the material that they've received um, so despite the fact that you may want this particular role and this is where you think you need to be 
Uh, it is still in the end up to the marketplace and the employer to decide. And one of the questions that I got over the weekend actually in one of the other presentations I was doing was about the fact of after the placement, what happens? And it's icing on the cake if any of our roles turn into extended roles, but our employers are signing on for the four month work placement. We actually have had the opportunity where a few have already communicated to us that they are extending, which is wonderful because they've got that need and they're looking to build their organization. But um, just like articling across the province, um, the majority of articling candidates, this is not just confined to the Bay Street model where you have stats that say this is what happens, which is an isolated case in the overall scheme of things. When you look at articling across the entire province, most of the candidates are looking for opportunities post articling. Mm -hmm. So they need to have the core skills to be able to go out there, land those roles and succeed in them. Yeah. And, the, um, and Gina, why don't you take us to the next uh, question? One of the questions um, was in terms of, uh, I wanted to clarify, our placements are within Ontario. Uh, we are um, uh, a program of the Lost Side of Upper Canada. We Our program placements are Ontario only. If you're looking for an opportunity to work outside of Ontario or outside of Canada and want to explore that option, the There's option path, is yeah. for, for articling and requesting the Law Society to consider that. So all of the opportunities that we've had are Ontario based exactly. um, across the province, but Ontario based. Um, Somebody was asking up there, uh, they have extensive experience uh, out of the country. Yes. They're in fact a lawyer. Mm -hmm. um, we won't identify the place. And we had quite a number of candidates who were uh, either got their law degree somewhere exactly. else, yes. um, or they were actually called to the bar, they'd been practicing mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. somewhere else. And the question was, uh, well, do I really, you know, do I really have to do this? Uh, and the answer is yes. Um, <laughs> This is for call to the bar in the province of Ontario, right. and and the process is set up not by us but by the Law Society, um, and they expect that you have uh, you demonstrate a certain level of skill, um, and frankly a certain familiarity with uh, the Ontario approach. Right. Exactly. Um, so we are. I just want to be clear um, that we're not a rubber stamp. Um, nobody gets a free pass. Um, and we make no apologies for that, because at the end of the day, um, if something happens later on, it, yes, they'll look to you, but they'll also look to us. Mm -hmm. And the credibility of the program uh, is important to all of the candidates who go through. Uh, so everybody does the same stuff. Nobody gets a free pass. Everybody's held to the same standard. Um, and we are, um, we are as uh, challenging with everybody, uh, wh wherever you, uh, whatever your background is. The fact that we have such a fabulous mix of people, mm -hmm. um, I think, um, enlivens the experience and enriches the experience for everybody. Uh, and I suspect, um, I'd be interested um, in your perspective um, as to, um, you know, what did you think about the fact that you had people from all over the world uh, and all different schools in the program? Well, I, I mean, I think it's a reality in our just our work placement. I mean, I'm working with you know, students or well, articling uh, students that are not necessarily all from mm -hmm. one school. They they're from different backgrounds. I mean, there's lawyers that are not necessarily did law school here in Ontario, but that came from out of the country as well. Um, and as well, I mean, I'm not dealing right now with clients, but I'm sure that in the future, when you deal with whatever client, mm -hmm. your client is not necessarily coming from Canada, but it's coming from other countries, and you kind of have to get used to different personalities and different, um, just different mindsets and et cetera, et cetera. I mean, I think it was it was really an inter interesting opportunity to know about different cultures and know where mm -hmm. other people came from and how law school happened and, and, and yeah. wherever. Just because your experience was, yeah. I think some of your your firm mates were a variety of experiences, mm -hmm. right? Um, one was a lawyer from Bangladesh, one from Pakistan, and the last person was called to the bar in New York. Mm -hmm. And the articling system that I work that I work with at Infrastructure Ontario was a barrister from England. Mm -hmm. So uh, <laughs> this is a real deal. You're going to be working with people yeah. who've got international experience and. They, and all of the students who had international experience uh, at the LPP, despite what they had learned in practice and the method of practice in their respective countries, had something to learn at uh, Ryerson. Because no matter what you have been doing in your other countries, I mean, there's a certain um, methodology in the way that things are done over here that you need, you're going to need to familiarize yourself with. And that's 
the, that was like the mutual consensus across the board with mm -hmm. all of my group members. And they got that experience that they needed at the LPP. There were a couple of questions I wanted to, to run by you on. Uh, the other requirements of the licensing process are the two licensing exams. And we, we strongly yes. recommend um, <laughs> that people complete those uh, prior to coming in. And I know that's not often the experience, and people have different experiences. Um, you know, we think it's quite busy in the training component and in the work placement, so that balancing preparing for and writing either of those two can be a bit chuggle, uh, of a challenge, but I'd like your perspective. And the other comment was, can I work during the training? You are working. Uh, I guess when the question comes to us, are, can I work during, <laughs> I see shaking of <laughs> can you work during the training component? You are working during the training component. And so if you're trying to juggle something external as well, something's going to give. And so feedback, uh, those two, both the exams and the uh, and The, the full-time nature the full yeah. of the, the training component. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so with regard to the exams, I wrote them directly uh, after law school. So um, it's just been one thing after the other. I just graduated from law school. I wrote the barrister and solicitor's exam. I got into the LPP, finished the training component, and now I'm in the workplace when I'm getting called in June. So that was... <laughs> <laughs> that's my check, check, check. Your bad. <laughs> He's going, going. Um, with regard to the second... Uh, work, You're working the in the workload, full time. Yeah. yeah. One of my group members uh, worked part-time while doing uh, the program full-time. She slept for about four hours uh, a day. Mm, ouch. Yeah. It's a lot of work. Yeah. I, I mean, it's doable, but be prepared. Yeah. Yeah. Joanne? Yep. Uh, well, for the exams, I mean, I didn't write my exams right after law school. I was planning to, and then decided, you know what, I'll just write it right after and give myself a little bit of a break. And I was hoping to write it during the LPP, but that didn't <laughs> work out just because it's a full-time job, and that's the reality of it. Um, so it's kind of being pushed back. So if you could write it beforehand, I would suggest that, because I mean, studying for it, you're stressed. Um, and just doing the LPP, I mean, it's it's not that you're going to be always stressed, and it's, you know, who knows what, but you're working. You know, it's, it's that, that stress of, of course, you know, whatever you hand into your mentor, I mean, you want to submit it, you want to do a good job on it, you want to submit mm -hmm. it in time as well. So it's you're in a working environment. Um, I mean, working, so I had my firm uh, member as well, my teammate, he worked on weekends. Um, so it wasn't too bad. I mean, I he managed, but sometimes, you know, he would call me and be like, Joanne, can you help me out? Um, you know, I'm, this is what we're doing, or let's say we had a group project, and I would say, yeah, sure, no problem. And then during the week, if he would have more time, like, you know, we, we worked that way, and it was, it was, it was great, but uh, it was tough for him. I mean, yeah. Obviously, you're also okay. juggling finding a work placement during the training corner right. as well. Yes. Yeah. So, so you've got your cover letter, your resume, stress. your interviews are going on. Yeah, yeah, I, for yeah. I forgot to mention uh, about that. It was nine to five, and I'd sort of work on all my files. At five o'clock, I close shop and <laughs> I'd start working on the stuff that Andre was talking about really preparing for interviews, drafting and redrafting resumes to match the job posts. Yeah. Uh, I mean, don't miss any of these fine points because they're essential to whether your resume actually gets forwarded to an employer or whether yeah. it's put in the junk pile. So, so I, I mean, I want to address uh, you know this in a in a couple of ways. Um, look, we we design a program that uh, better positions you for success. We have obligations with the law society. Um, we are preparing candidates to obtain work placements and uh, succeed beyond that. We uh, have drawn very extensively uh, from the practicing bar. I practiced for 23 years uh, in criminal defense uh, work with some, with some labor work at all level of court. And, but we have drawn extensively throughout the province. We have a uh, strategic alliance with the Ontario Bar Association. With there are approximately 18,000 members throughout the province of Ontario. So we, we from the very beginning, have taken the position that we're trying to prepare you to succeed out there. And the way that we do that is to start with the people who are out there and what they know to be required for success. So the workload <coughs> is designed to achieve the goals, the law society requirements, and better position you for success. We're very aware of the financial stress that students are on when they finish school. I mean, after all, you know, you might have done four years of undergrad, three years of law school, or you might have taken a different route, but whatever route you've taken, um, you've invested a lot in your education. Um, and um, and it's costly, mm -hmm. uh, and it, most people aren't 
aren't making enough during the time they're not in school uh, to be able to finance it. That is reality, and we're very aware of that. Um, <clears throat> Our role is not to try and, uh, you know, we couldn't possibly try and relieve the financial burden, um, address the financial burden. <clears throat> We're the opportunity for you to put your education to work. Um, because at the end of law school, unless you get called, uh, you can't practice. So we're there to help you put your education to work. Now, if there's some other way, you're free to choose that. This is all a choice. Um, we are enormously determined uh, to assist you to get to your goal and enormously determined to assist you to succeed. Um, but we make no apology for the high standards. We make no apology for the hard work. We make no apology for asking you to stretch your mind. Um, and we make no apology for asking you to go and do things that you never thought you'd have to do and uh, just really stretch time and space and mind because that's what the profession demands um, and that's what the clients expect. Mm -hmm. And in a profession that is going to change fundamentally over the next uh, four or five years, you really need to be able to do not only that but to adapt to change. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's, that's really at the heart of what we're trying to do. Now, I. I know we have a couple of questions. Um, you know, people might have been doing different things with their um, with their legal work, and and they just and they'd sort of like to sort of well get through this and mm -hmm. and you know get the ticket and then they're on because maybe you've been um, you've been doing something else but you haven't been practicing anywhere. And I I appreciate that, <clears throat> but I just I, I mean I want to be clear about something. A practice is more than showing up. Um, it's, you know, you, you don't just finish law school and then sort of, well, i got to get that other stuff out of the way so I can go practice. Um, you, should, you should give a little bit of credit to the people who work and succeed in the practice of law that they actually add value to what they do with every minute they're engaged in the profession. Um, and um, law school has many great strengths. Um, the practice of law is an entirely different thing. And we're trying to prepare candidates uh, to get called and ultimately succeed there. doesn't mean you get everything you need on day one. Nope. Nobody could possibly do that. People have been at this for decades, and they will tell you that they are still learning every day, still perfecting, still getting better, and still being reminded of how much they don't know. Mm -hmm. um, so. You know, that's the approach that we're going to take, and uh, we draw strength from the fact that so many people have such fabulous backgrounds. It enriches, I think, the experience of all, uh, but there is no free pass here. Um, and for that, um, that's our agreement with the Law Society, and that's our commitment to the candidates. Um, we're we're going to take every bit of feedback that we got from year one, and we're going to make this as strong as we can for year two. And I'm sure it'll be even stronger in year two than it was in year one. And I suspect it'll be even stronger in year three. And our commitment to our employers, who expect you to hit the ground running when you get there exactly. in January to April for your placement. Yeah, and ultimately thanks. the profession. Thanks, and ultimately Henry. the profession. Yeah, that's yeah. Good. There are a couple of questions. And, and Chris, thank yeah. you for, for that. Uh, just sort of the overview about what our um, goals are for the program. A couple of questions that come up that we wanted to address. Uh, one of them is the question of fees and the question of any additional fees. There are no additional fees. The cost of the program, when you are engaged in the licensing process with the Law Society of Upper Canada, uh, you are paying a fee. You are paying the same fee whether you're choosing articling or choosing the LPP. So there's no additional costs to participating in the Ryerson program. Um, sometimes the confusion comes up that there is a, uh, within that fee, there is the experiential component and there are the exam components. But everybody who goes through the Law Society li uh, licensing process has to pay those amounts. Uh, and they're paid to the Law Society, so they're, they're not paid to, the, to Ryerson. So just to clarify that. Um, there was a question as well on the May 29th. May 29th is the time that you have to uh, register your intent to the Law Society. 
shortly after that, in very early June, and we'll be coming back to people with this information, we will ask you to register formally in the Ryerson LPP. And there's a questionnaire that we need you to fill out so that we can get some information. And then uh, once you're engaging with us at that point, we will start um, having information from Andre, from all of us, about the training component, about the work placement, and moving forward on that. Uh, and, and on the training component, a question that has come up, uh, and, and this goes back to what we said before, that this is not law school, um, are marks given in the LPP. Um, you either succeed in the training component, and then succeed in the work placement, and then succeed overall, or do not. Um, there is feedback given. You are given an indicator of uh, whether you're meeting requirements, if you're still developing, or if you're exceeding expectations. But there, are, this is not an issue where you'll have a final exam and you'll get a grade. Because in practice, your marks or your evaluation is based on your client deciding to stick with you, deciding to pay your bill, um, your supervisor deciding to give you more work or not give you more work, and we're trying to set that reality. Um, any thoughts about the, the marks question or, or not? I think that no, I just wanted to... No, that's good. And, just, and you mentioned it before, but um, uh, if you're articling or you have a position some outside of the province, right. that, that doesn't qualify except through special exception of the law society right. so um, <clears throat> we're not uh, encouraging or asking or even suggesting that anybody go get a position somewhere else right. this is for call to the bar in the province of Ontario so we we need positions in the province of Ontario so that you get a sense of uh, how the profession works here and Absolutely. what the different requirements are there's a great question. All of these are great questions. There's one question about coming with previous experience. Do you need it? Don't you need it? Uh, in terms of working experience. And some people come uh, out of law school without any experience, and others have a variety of different experiences. Andre, can you sort of uh, address whether or not uh, the LPP assumes that we have any work experience from our candidates uh, when they start the program? How beneficial is it? Uh, and, and what can they do if they if they don't have work experience? I think everything that you've done throughout law school and the things that you're, you're doing along the way give you some set of skills but the training component then builds from scratch really the types of skills that you will need within the practice and within the profession and what we tell our employers for work placement consideration is that the skills gained during the work during the training component will allow you to hit the ground running when you get there for the placement so even if you didn't uh, have tremendous drafting skills or something else beforehand you're going to develop them there if you can though in preparing yourself for the program and you've ex you haven't done a lot of drafting prior in law school or somewhere else or you haven't done a lot of uh, teamwork or you haven't done things that will allow you to develop some core skills, take the time to do it. Mm -hmm. Any activity that will allow you to do it, I would encourage you to pursue. So that would be if you could do some extra research and writing. If you can do anything that will allow you to develop those teamwork skills, anything that will help you to polish up your your uh, presence will, will really be helpful. Um, but in the end, the skills gained in the training component are the ones that we're get, in a sense guaranteeing to our employers yeah. that you have when you get there uh, on day one. And in fact, we don't assume that candidates have any prior related work experience. Did you have any before? I, I didn't have any in no. law school. I didn't even have the opportunity to do a lot of drafting. So, yeah. I mean, I remember my mentor telling me day one when I wrote my first memo and then yeah. day so many weeks later when she looked at my last memo, she was just like, wow, is this the same person? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Completely like, well, that's congratulations. Great. And I have to say, it was, it was a great you know feeling yeah. like hearing that from a lawyer and she worked on Big yeah. Street before and you know she had so much experience and it was just it gave me that confidence it gave mm. me that confidence of entering the the, the real world well, <laughs> Josh did you have any related yeah, experience I, I served at a firm in Mississauga and I worked at Community Legal Aid and at Pro Bono Students Canada as part of the Family right. Law Project in Windsor but I don't think that necessarily put me like miles ahead of everyone else we're all at the same point yeah. and mm. we all learn together so, yeah, right. but you would have been able to share that experience with the other members of your of your group of your firm. Yes, and in, in, in many ways, I was the least experienced member of my. Oh, of your group. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're lawyers who have all of their respective bars and their respective countries of origin, so I had a lot to learn from all of them as well. It's. Uh, it's really a novel experience. But the level overall, though, of, of the candidates, the, it's a tremendous mix, right? We don't have a lot of yeah. practitioners. We don't have a lot of this or a lot of that. It's, it's a great it's, mix. It's a great I, mix. You know, I think, uh, you know, there's a question here. Well, if I don't have any experience, am I, you know, the hidden message here is, am I really at a disadvantage? And I think one of the things that we've learned um, from the first group is that there is such a diversity, um, and we're going to work at drawing out all of those 
magical experiences that people have and the great advice. But also, Andre, you mentioned in terms of uh, just the simple things like preparing your <laughs> covering exactly. letter, getting your, your presentation, your resume together, the networking. We're going to give you tips on helping to do that and how to do it and help you to refine it so that you are in a position to be able to capitalize on it. And that's important whether you're pitching for um, one of the placements that we have or actually beyond exactly. because, uh, you know, Putting your best foot forward is always essential, and Absolutely. and so your we're going to do even more I think this year than yep. uh, this next year than we did yep. this year because we have a better sense of <laughs> of some of the opportunities to improve different skills. Absolutely, and start earlier too as well. Yeah, yeah. So I you know be on the lookout. Absolutely. Yes. Well, <laughs> um, there's a question about the Australian. Then I'll come back yep. to that Good. one, uh, Gina. So um, this is a uh, this is a made in Ontario. Uh, model, um, and there are different models with different um, approaches. Um, ours is online, but only in name, um, because you actually use a computer. But the magic, I think, in ours is that it is very dynamic, it moves by the minute, uh, and it is interactive, which <coughs> means that you're interacting with real people, um, not according to a schedule, um, and you don't come to a class in order to interact. Um, so I think in that sense it is uh, a unique model. It's very people intensive. We actually published a list in the Ontario Reports uh, mm -hmm. a couple of weeks ago of all the employers who'd signed on and a week after that of all the mentors, assessors, curriculum developers. Both are on our website. And they're both on our website. So you get a sense of how many people are involved in making this um, a success and what a broad range of experience we have from uh, from the practicing bar. Gina, you were going to address one of the questions. Well, one of the questions, well, and, and you actually uh, segued into it, uh, was in terms of uh, a typical day, or is there a schedule? Oh. And, and we talked about <laughs> it in terms of whether or not you could work or practice or prepare for your licensing exams. Um, is there a schedule? Or I mean, you talked about nine to five, but sometimes I would assume that it might have gone out of the out of the books. But is there a typical schedule? <laughs> I'll let you two answer that one. <laughs> In terms of the training component. I, I mean, I feel like there wasn't a typical week. Right. Um, so very close to kind of what I'm experiencing right now. There's <laughs> weeks where, you know, I'll stay in the office late or I'll go home and give myself a break and then continue and get back to work and do some more readings. Um, so, I mean, LPP, I it was, I wake up probably at like eight and then it could go anywhere until five or then sometimes six and as I would take a break and I would do the same thing I would be working even late at night mm -hmm. uh, there was weekends that I thought great I'm not gonna have any work to do this weekend and then last minute <laughs> uh, Simon that's due on Monday your client um, calls on Friday night Sorry about that. Happens. yes and I mean once I remember I got a phone call um, this was of course through like the virtual firm uh, that my client was in jail and I had to bail him out and it was okay quick you have to respond because he's calling you so I think that was just it was it really um, I believe like the the, the LPP program and the, the first four months really simulated well mm -hmm. the real working environment mm -hmm. um, and that's what I'm experiencing right now you know so I have busy weeks and other weeks that are maybe a little bit less busy but so don't still. expect to come here and have your 16 weeks outlined for you from day one because it's going to play out the files play out as you move forward right yeah, I agree. I mean, there's, there isn't a standard schedule, but I, I guess what you're going to get out of it is some sort of structure. Mm -hmm. Since you're using Clio, you can go back and see how your day was sort of organized, mm -hmm. how it was mapped out. You can talk to your mentor about it. See if you're making the most use out of your time. See if you're being efficient. Uh, and that is directly related to what you're going to be doing in the workplace. Every week, I have... Uh, a set of tasks that I've got to accomplish for the next mm -hmm. week and the week to follow. And that is further subdivided into the hours I spend <laughs> each day. So that Clio tracking system is going to be sort of directly related to what you're going to do in the workplace. So if there's something that you take away from it, it's that structure, that, you know, rigor. 
And docketing that time is how you make your money if you're in private practice. Yeah, right. Uh, Fortunately, yeah. I don't have yeah. to do that, but exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but you're doing that in your You're docketing. You're docketing, you're docketing yeah. enough for both of you. Yeah. <laughs> you're docketing. There, there was a question about the French language yes. program, and you should direct um, you should direct the questions to Anne Levesque right. uh, at the University of Ottawa. Um, <laughs> she is the uh, director there, and they'll be able to at, answer all the specifics about that uh, about that program. That's right. Um, we had some questions about uh, how many intake years or um, having this more than once. For, so for the time being, our information to you is is the following, that we have an intake in August, uh, and, and we're actually quite uh, specific. The training component is from August to the end of December, so four months, uh, end of August to the end of December, and then the work placement is from January through to the end of April. Uh, I did get that right, yes, to the end correct. of April. Yeah. Uh, and those are uh, our timelines. So um, again, uh, for the time being, for those of you who are thinking about it, those are the timelines that we are required to consider. Yep. Okay. We're also encouraging folks as we uh, get you ready for the training component and the placement period that we'll have some sessions over the summertime uh, that will help to get you started early on and getting that material together. That's right. So there's a there's a great question here um, about. Um, it's great to know that there are candidates with different backgrounds. Uh, what about uh, candidates who, ha who have a family and they're trying to juggle uh, children, uh, partners, responsibilities with the LPP? And there were a number of candidates mm -hmm. in that uh, position. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I can't begin to imagine all the pressures that are on those candidates from all different sources. Uh, you know, there were times um, when uh, the demands or pressures of family, um, they all take, they always take priority. Uh, and those candidates uh, contacted us and said, you know, we, we just need, this isn't going to get done by the deadline, um, or uh, I'm at the hospital, or it happens to be the first day of school. Uh, so we get that, and we've made uh, accommodations um, and dealt with that. Um, and there was also a question about... Uh, uh, sorry, just to pick up on that point for a moment. But just like articling, just like practice, all of those factors come into play in ma managing your practice and, and your, your work. So managing the training component and the work placement is all part of working as well. So it's it, it's learning how to juggle all those uh, requirements. Yeah, and deadlines are serious. Um, I think uh, well, I know that from some of the candidates' feedback was, um, you get a call and an email, and there's no designated hours. A, a partner might send an email at 7 p.m. or at uh, first thing in the morning, and and you'll know when the deadline is, but when that email or the call will come out, just as in practice, you're not sure. So if there are concerns about meeting those deadlines, we ask you to act professionally because part of the skills that we're asking you to develop are professionalism and ethics and also practice management. So if you cannot make a deadline, you need to be in touch with somebody. Just in work, you need to be in touch with somebody. But if you have some questions about about that and your particular family situation, you know, email us uh, yeah. offline and, and we'll put you in touch with somebody who, who was in a similar uh, situation. Absolutely. Um, and uh, yep. uh, Andre, one of the questions that keeps coming up, and I just wanted to reiterate it because um, the question is that if you live in another city and participate in the Ryerson LPP, will you be placed um, in, in work in that city or does it have to be in Toronto? Uh, we, we would welcome anyone to help us in leveraging opportunities in those cities. We reached out to Ottawa. Uh, we had candidates in Ottawa who reached out in the local area as well. And a combination of both landed roles for those individuals. Uh, um, it, it really comes down to everyone conducting that outreach and, and helping the profession to appreciate the program, uh, but we cannot guarantee um, where that placement will be. And if somebody has a potential can, a potential yeah. placement, um, we have had a couple of people asking questions, can they get further information for Absolutely. that potential work placement? Get in touch with me earlier than later, and I can definitely help to make sure that that works out. And I think, you know, uh, following up on that, um, not surprisingly, um, it's easiest to get the word out in the GTA mm -hmm. um, about the program and about uh, two employers. Um, that's one of the reasons we're doing so much outreach, uh, just as we did last year, but, you know, we're repeating it this year to other communities to make sure that people understand the opportunities and we're going to be letting the candidates know um, I know everybody wants to practice in a certain or many people want to practice in a certain jurisdiction um, so 
we have a number of candidates who during this year took roles that actually aren't just um, outside of the GTA, well outside of the GTA, <laughs> we won't mention specifically, yeah. but aren't, aren't just um, roles for four months. They, uh, the employer was actually looking for the four plus a future. Exactly. And, um, and it's, you know, what you're going to practice and where you're going to practice, uh, who knows what that really looks like in five years' time. So I would encourage everybody to, uh, even if you're never, ever, ever going to work outside the community in which you now live, just to think about what that option might look like. Um, in our travels and my travels, um, there are many opportunities uh, there um, that aren't being taken advantage of because people don't know what they are. Exactly. But I always say before you before you dismiss it, at least know what it is you're dismissing. The the other part about the program is that the four month work placement, if an employer is interested in you and you're interested in them, but they can't do ten months be, uh, under the traditional article model but they're more open to the yeah. four-month model, we've been able to create a tremendous number of opportunities by leveraging that as well. So that's something to think about as part of this. And it's a two-way street. One of the comments, and I think you, you've heard from our candidates today, um, it is a two-way street. There are no guarantees, absolute guarantees. We are working really hard to ensure that the opportunities are made available. Candidates are bringing in their opportunities that they have found, that they have uh, exactly. uh, provided. Um, and there's absolutely no guarantee. But at the same time, if you actually contribute and look at the program, as a uh, an opportunity to um, to engage, to further develop, to think broadly, and to think uh, think creatively, then I think this is a great opportunity. It, it may not be for everybody, but it certainly is for a lot of people who uh, who have joined the program. Chris, any closing remarks? We're at no. Uh, I think we'll uh, first of all thank you very much to our candidates, uh, Joanne and Josh. Uh, good luck in the rest of your work placement. Yes. Uh, and we look forward to uh, seeing you at your call to the bar. Uh, to Gina and Andre, thanks very much. Um, we're looking forward, and to all of you, thanks for joining us. Uh, we're happy to take your questions. We're happy uh, we'll be addressing the ones that we didn't get to. Uh, look, this is an option. Um, and if you're interested in the option, um, you should try it. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to find out more, then you can speak to us or speak to the candidates. Um, there was a lot said about the law practice program before we had put pen to paper <laughs> to design day one. And most of it was wrong. Um, but what we're determined to do is support you in your future success. That's our goal. That's our only goal. Our responsibility to the Law Society is to help you achieve, develop skills that they've outlined and expose you to a number of tasks, all of which they believe will be important for your future success as lawyers. And your future success, whatever that looks like and however you paint it, is what we're interested in, what we work every day to achieve, and ultimately uh, what um, the program is all about. So thanks for joining us. Uh, we look forward to answering your questions, and hopefully we'll see a good number of you at the end of August. Thanks, everyone.